Good. All right. Well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our session on the uh, ZT Open, um, Open Arc Accelerator Infrastructure uh, System that we're going to be talking about today. So my name is Raymond Miles. Uh, my colleague and I, uh, Mark Chubb, will be uh, discussing a bit about the um, about the um, our system that we're building around the Open Accelerator Infrastructure. Um, really simple agenda. First thing I'm going to do is just talk a little bit about the business case, right? And you know why is ZT Systems as a company interested in building, you know, a product around the Open Accelerator Infrastructure? And then Mark is going to go into some of the details around this, uh, our exact system. So. Before I get started, I'm just going to give us a really quick uh, background on ZT Systems. Um, we uh, are this year, 1994 was our first year of operations, and this year is our 25th anniversary. So, silver anniversary for us. We're very excited to um, still be going strong. We started as a desktop company, and about uh, 12 years ago, we transitioned to be completely focused on uh, servers. And our market uh, focus is completely on hyperscale. Um, we've really built our company not only on the engineering side, operations, fulfillment, manufacturing, all about delivering uh, purpose-built servers for the hyperscale market. So it's been, um, I've been here 12 years, had an opportunity to really um, enjoy um, working with our customers and delivering uh, all kinds of interesting solutions. Looking forward to working with um, the Open Accelerator infrastructure. Um, I'm going to really give a quick background also on our engagement with OCP. So we've um, been with OCP for, for many years now, back since 2012. Uh, we sponsored several of these conferences. Uh, we were here last year um, talking about uh, uh, the AMD uh, 3U GPU system there that's pictured. Um, really enjoyed our engagement with the open community and the open projects. It's been a really um, rewarding experience. Um, that, that uh, the bottom point on the product slide is a, kind of a pre-announcement. The system we're talking about today, we're planning on productizing in the second half of, of next year. So more to follow um, at the, in the March conference. I want to go back in time a little bit as well to talk a little bit about, I guess, standards and the benefit of standards. Um, when I started at, at ZT Systems, you know, back in 2008, um, our company was really focused at that stage on, you know, really delivering, um, you know, products that were mostly based on channel solutions. So we'd have a channel motherboard, a channel power supply, you know, channel chassis, integrating it for our customers and delivering solutions. And in those days, you know, the OEMs pretty much had a lock on these things called, you know, me NIC mezzanines, right? And there was many times when I would be in competitive bid situations where, you know, we would literally be shut out because we didn't have, um, uh, let's say, an open source NIC solution that, that was a MEDS that would afford us piece, the full PCI expansion allowed in the system. And then in you know, 2012, there was the release of this NIC spec, and it was fantastic for us. You know, all of a sudden now, there was this, um, you know, removing that, honestly, that proprietary solution that, at the end of the day, our data center customers didn't really care about. What they really wanted was full PCI expansion and a one new chassis. So with the advent of this, we ended up selling you know, tens of thousands of servers right, um, based on the OCP you know, um, 1.0 spec. And it was a real, real win for us um, to basically take advantage, you know, not advantage, but taking the opportunity of those standards to build products and deliver for our customers. So it was really a, a huge success for us. And kind of playing that forward to today, you know, um, there's a lot of advantage in the open accelerator infrastructure. Same idea, right, of, of these common building blocks, these common standards that allow us to do product development. So we've had a lot of discussions today on these. Just don't want to you know, regurgitate all this, but there are basic you know, three major hardware elements. It's the OEM, right, the accelerator module, the baseboard, the UBB, and then we have this, this HIB board, which is the host interface board. There's a lot of detail on that, and you know, Mark will go into some of that. And then there's the tray, and then you know, there's the, you know, the the, so the chassis itself, so there's a lot of pieces to this, but again, these, these standards is what allows, you know, I'd say innovation to, become, to come together at some level of um, you know, predictability. So business case, you know, for us, as we look at this, we're saying, okay, you know, we see you know, lots of new innovations out there, all kinds of different GPUs, FPGAs, all these different hardware accelerators. And as us as a system provider, are we going to build a, a system for every one of those? No, we're not going to do that, 
right? So the idea of being able to, you know, you know, move quickly, have a standards-based approach so that we can hopefully meet multiple um, targets with a single, single system or a slightly modified system, it's a huge win for us, right? And as, a, as, a, you, know, as you look at you know, product development and, and development timelines, right, it, it li literally allows us to, um, I would say, focus on the standards-based hardware development approach and be able to harness the unique technologies out there and the different um, FPGAs, ASICs, FP, you know, all those uh, GPUs in, in the marketplace. So it's a, for us, it's a huge win, right? And we're really looking forward to continuing to, you know, drive time to market, right, and get these products out to the industry at a very high, high quality bar. And that's another thing, right? If you have these common building blocks, hopefully you can move from known good to known good versus having to kind of reinvent the wheel every time, right? Okay, oh, here's a, here's a new GPU, we gotta build a whole new system, we gotta go whole through qualification, you know, there's just this immense amount of R&D and effort that we'd have to deploy, and that's, that really, you know, a lot of times we'll sit there and we'll look at the ROI around and say, we're not gonna do that, right? But if we go back and actually use, you know, some of these open standards, it really allows us to, I would say, purpose-built more servers for more of our customers. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark um, Chubb. Um, why don't you come up, Mark? He's going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of our actual system. Chairman. Hello, everyone. So, um, you know, as Raymond mentioned, um, you know, it's, it, it's about standards, it's about building blocks, it's about common elements that we can use to sort of um, put together and, and, you know, gain efficiencies and synergies between, you know, different companies so that we can provide you know, common solutions to the customers that are, that are both uh, proven, cost effective, and uh, uh, you know, meet their needs. Um, and, and we also gain benefit of, of you know, uh, you know, innovations that, that we get from different partners. So, um, so this is, uh, you know, you know, this is uh, ZT Systems in partnership with Inventech. Uh, this is a uh, uh, OAI uh, reference design that, that we're supporting the um, OAI uh, subgroup. Um, so this system here is is a a, a 4U server that is well actually a 4U um, uh, JBOG. So that's uh, the the head node, the compute node is external to this. So you need an external head node to plug in externally. Um, so that uh, uh, feeds into this system, uh, but it has the the common elements that you've you know probably seen here. It has the uh, the host interface board, the uh, um, which is uh, uh, supporting the um, uh, PCIe Gen 4 fabric. Uh, you have the uh, UBB, the Universal Baseboard, um, which supports the OAM module, and this is um, uh, essentially a, a, a Gen 4 um, PCIe fabric that we're using here. So any of the modules that support PCIe Gen 4, uh, we can drop into this. Um, so uh, the other thing is uh, on the um, uh, the host interface board, we also have uh, some additional slots, PCI slots for expansion. We have uh, up to four uh, um, NVMe SSDs. Um, we have a local management controller here for uh, telemetry, you know, fan control, et cetera. Um, in addition, we have the, uh, um, the um, UBB tray that we can slide out the UBB for easy serviceability. Um, and uh, we have this system uh, on display. Uh, you know, it's just a, a prototype reference design, uh, non-working. Um, but if you <clears throat> visit the OEI experience booth uh, on the second floor, you can kind of take a look at this and, um, you know, get a feel for it. So these are some of the system features here. Um, so as I mentioned, this is a, 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 a 4U um, server, fits in a 19-inch rack. Um, uh, again, it does not have the host integrated, so you need an external host uh, to drive this. Um, supports eight uh, OEM modules uh, in an eight-port hypercube mesh configuration, and I'll go in, I have a diagram that kind of shows that. Um, this, uh, uh, the connectivity uh, between the UBB and the, and the um, host interface board is a coplanar connection. Um, so it's uh, both, both are on the same plane and, and it just basically plugs in with uh, uh, a series of XMAX uh, high density connectors. Um, so the, uh, and then I mentioned the expansion slots, four expansion slots, and then we also have um, uh, uh, external uh, connections. We actually have uh, two ports, so we have a, a, a two by 16 ports to support multi-host connections. So you can have two external head nodes, uh, you know, 
as a, as a multi-host multi uh, connection. Um, and then uh, I, I talked about the storage, the, the, the NVMe drives, uh, and then the power, the, there are four um, three kilowatt, um, 54 volt power supplies in here and a two plus two redundancy configuration. Um, so the, the total system power is, is on the neighborhood of um, about um, maybe 45 to five kilowatts of, of 4.5 to five kilowatts of power per system. Uh, then uh, for this, we have the system management here. This is the, the A-speed uh, AST2520. Uh, system fans, we've got uh, five uh, uh, 80 by 80 millimeter 54 volt fans in here. Um, and then there's just some, some various uh, you know, front and rear IO options there. Uh, so this is an exploded view. They're showing all of the, the elements of the system. Um, so as you can see there, uh, we have the, uh, the UBB with the eight uh, um, uh, accelerator modules. Um, all of those fit on a UBB tray. The UBB tray slides out um, you know, from, the, from the, uh, the chassis base. Uh, we have the uh, host interface. Uh, I guess I don't have a, uh, a laser pointer on here, but uh, the host interface board, you can see on the right there, uh, that uh, plugs in on the same level as, as the, the OA, um, UBB board. Uh, plugs into that. Uh, we have a, uh, a fan board that supports the fans with fan, fan control there. Um, and then we have the, uh, the, the four um, uh, three kilowatt power supplies that fit in the bottom one U of the, of the, uh, the chassis. So, um, um, so moving along, this, this is just a front view. So this is showing some front IO uh, options here that, that, that can be removed or um, you know, uh, other, other IO options can be plugged in there. Uh, and then this is showing the, the eight QSFP DD uh, connectors. So this is for uh, expansion. If you want to expand out to a 16-way a, a um, uh, OAM solution, uh, you know, uh, cable to another box, uh, or it's, it's also used in the, the, uh, um, the, the uh, eight-way um, uh, eight-port uh, HCM hypermesh, hypercube mesh uh, connectivity. And I'll show that in a second. Uh, this is showing the, the tray. Um, so this is the, the uh, UBB tray that is uh, common to the um, OAI building blocks. So this is something that we're working with the, the OAI subgroup to um, refine and, and um, uh, 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 design in commonalities so that this can fit into other um, uh, chassis bases. Uh, so this is the rear view. So this is showing all of the, um, uh, you know, the I/O ports. Uh, I mentioned to you that we have the the two sets of of uplink. So we've uh, 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 by 16s on on either side that we can support uh, cabling uh, multi-hosts for. Uh, we've got the the power supplies there, um, the four power supplies in a two plus two config, the four PCIe expansion slots, uh, and then the uh, four M NVMe drives that are there, uh, hot swap NVMe drives. Um, uh, so this is the eight port uh, HCM topology that I mentioned. So, uh, so what you have here is these are actually uh, by eight links, uh, PCIe links that are going between each of the, uh, uh, the OAM uh, uh, module ports here. Uh, so these, uh, so essentially what we're using is, is um, you know, each, each of the, you know, ports from two to seven are, are we're only using by eight of those, even those are the, those are set up as by 16 ports in the, uh, the OAM um, port mapping, um, pin mapping. Uh, we're only using by eight. Um, uh, and then in, you'll notice that uh, the uh, port one is actually uh, one L and one H. So that's one low and one high. So the, the lower eight lanes are used and the upper eight lanes are used. So we use it in this configuration so that we can get a full, uh, by eight hypercube mesh uh, between everything. So everything that you see that's, that's routed sort of north is, is on the UBB itself. Um, you'll notice that at the bottom there, uh, in order to gain the full eight port hypercube mesh uh, connectivity, we have to use external cables. So we have the uh, uh, QSFP uh, DD ports there and, and the cable connections between the modules one and five and two and six. So. Uh, this just goes into a little bit more detail about that. Um, so, you know, essentially just, just looking at the detailed connectivity, um, 
as I mentioned, the, we're using the eight ports uh, that are listed there, um, and port one is split into you know, a low and a high. Um, so the, the ports two, three, four, five, six, and seven are, are by eight lane, and then port one is broken up into two by eights. So, uh, so ports four and six, as I mentioned uh, on the bottom, are cable connections to support the eight port uh, HCM, and then they can also be used for um, the um, uh, scale out to, to support another eight uh, modules to get a total of 16. So, uh, so in summary, um, you know, so the, the, you know, the server industry has uh, really flourished um, with the benefit of the open standards. Um, so again, you know, common theme of, of using building blocks that, that um, are common, have, um, uh, you know, developed by um, committees and, and partners that sort of get together and, and use the, the, you know, bring to the table different innovation, innovative ideas uh, and allow us to sort of gain, you know, gain the best of, of, of all worlds there. Um, so it's, it's uh, really um, encouraging to work with a, a, you know, a bunch of smart folks that, uh, in these committees that they're just coming up with great ideas all the time and, and nobody's held back you know, because there's, for fear of IP, it's just, let's just figure out the best solution. You know. so, uh, um, so again, OAI providing a you know, standards-based approach to harness uh, new accelerator technologies, as, as was mentioned earlier, you heard in, the, in Whitney's uh, session, um, there's so many different accelerator options now with FPGAs, the um, GPUs, TPUs, NPUs, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just growing. So having this common uh, module um, spec that everybody can follow and adhere to uh, makes it easier for the platform designers to sort of drop those into the, to our common uh, UBBs. Um, so again, um, the, the advantages are you know, reducing development costs, uh, improving time to market, and uh, more robust and proven building blocks. So because of the fact that uh, um, you know, these different parties are, are developing these building blocks means that they've uh, run through a series of validation and testing, and so um, other partners that choose to, to, to use that, uh, those components are gaining benefit of all that testing and validation. Um, so this uh, ZT, even though we're, we're sort of demonstrating a, a reference design um, in this uh, time frame, which we you know, look to power on uh, late Q4, uh, we will have a, uh, an OAI actual product uh, that we're targeting second half of 2020. Um, and then you know, more sessions and demos on OAI. So we have the, um, uh, the Open Accelerator Infrastructure Overview. Uh, I believe that uh, CMAC is giving that talk in uh, G103. And then after that, there's an OAI reference system joint review where um, you know, each of the three uh, companies will talk about their different reference designs, OAI re system reference designs. And then please visit the OAI experience booth up on the second floor, and you can take a look at all the different OAI reference systems. So any questions? All right, thank you very much.